Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast for me, your host, Imperial Dane. My sincerest apologies. First off, apparently, I mean, this is the second time I'm recording this episode. First time, apparently, there were some serious audio issues, which I did not catch, and sadly, my dear viewers had to be exposed to that. Apparently, there was some sort of buzzing noise and whatnot. I'm not entirely sure what it was, but it seems to have gone now. Quickly did a test, so hopefully it shouldn't happen again. Sadly, it can crop up from time to time, I fear. Not that I like it, of course, and obviously, I said about correcting it first, so, but it will probably mean this episode goes up a bit late. We shall be watching, on the other hand, we shall be watching Evil in a Closet, a rather audacious name, fighting for the 2nd SS Panzer Division Das Reich. One of the initial SS units, which actually did not start out as Panzer Divisions, they first started as motorized regiments, then later Panzer Grenadier Divisions, or Schutzen Regiments, or Divisions, Finally, full Panzer Grenadier Divisions, then even more finally, Panzer Divisions. But they also had the sort of interesting honor of actually being some of the few units ever to be accorded their own Tiger Company. Although that was a bit later on. Just a bit later. In the opposite side, we shall be watching Simon! Simon, aka Aimstrong, fighting for the 3rd Armored Division. And already here, note to standard start, but note slight difference here. Of course, and I mean, that's a slight peculiarity of this map, of course. I mean, the Verma southern map, or well, the southern player, can more directly sort of influence where he wants to focus, wherever the Americans, I mean, or the northern. You can't really say, oh, I want to focus on the west here, because, I mean, that's just a long, silly route. I mean, it's just work there. On the other hand, I mean, Eel in the closet focusing on the right hand side. Falskun is advancing up pretty quickly. Getting spotted by Rifleman. The Rifleman set in for pursuit. The Falskun has run in. Get close to the house, Rifleman looming, closing in, might go for the house, it's going to be a raid for the building, the Fairmark though kicks the door in and gets in first, yelling ha ha ha, Yankees. Rifleman though already got down, apparently poor Bob could not handle the disappointment and just simply lost the will to live. Heinz though quickly goes down, shot in the face as he was making vulgar faces at the Americans, another one goes down and of course right here the Americans do have the advantage. Several men around two windows, of course, buildings do provide some protection, considerable protection in fact, but again, if you can master more, you know, fire at one side, well, <laughs> that's going to limit it. More false grenades are arriving, but at the same time, we do see Aimstrong pushing for the right-hand side, we do see the false though, being detailed to push them off. Big missy, Yankees, big missy. And more rifle wing in, but they do get caught for it by the Hosex, suffering a few bullets from the German troops. Already one squad is pushed away, heavily wounded. Continue the fight though now. Under considerably heavy fire, although the Falskans inside the building need to get the bloody hell out of their Heinz. And there we go. The only thing that seems to keep them together is their ultimate belief in the final victory for the Third Reich. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not their bodies holding them together with that little health left. And you're just getting run down, and I mean, it's rather going grisly here for Simon. Already one rifle score has been brutalized, another one has also taken considerably nasty losses. And looks like he's going to be pushed off fully, and ultimately he's about, well, lost eight riflemen, two engineers for about getting three false grenadiers. Perhaps not the best trade off. I mean, I'm not a major in economy, but that's not good economy. Manpower wise, anyways. Of course, he kept, you know, the German player a bit occupied, but still, I mean... Anyways, making good progress on the left-hand side, and... Three false guns, so I mean, even the closet are going for some very aggressive Wehrmacht strategies, but at the same time... These two false gun ideas, with barely any health left, is on the left-hand side! On the left-hand side, all on their own! All alone and forgotten, and I mean, it's only going to take these engineers basically sneezing at them, and those false guns are going to be gone! Flamethrower Pioneer is up again, even the closet really going for some aggression, he's gearing up his troops, but... And there we go, the engineers move in, and the false guys get executed. Absolutely horrendous, an absolute waste of false guys as well, I mean, he couldn't even wait to just reinforce them. I mean, absolutely a waste of troops right there, by evil in the closet. Flamethrower Pioneer is doing what they can, bursting two Yankees into flame, Flamethrower engineers moving up, Pioneer is pulling back to behind the Falskers, while Falskers are kind of trying to keep the right hand flank, safe from Americans, MG-42 now pulling up, crowds are being burned, Rifle are going to flank the MG, Flamethrower engineers moving up, Rifle taking up position in the house as well, catching all the troops in the middle of the field, from all sides, exposed fire, actual fire, 
and a full retreat from the center by S no not Simon evil in the closet right in the house and now currently target practice for the fullness down to very little health getting shot at at the same time making good progress in the left hand side Aimstrong is holding a large part of the map and he's certainly holding one of the more resource valuable points particularly the high munitions could benefit Aimstrong and the third armored <coughs> Rapin pushing forwards with a sprint in their step, although might spot the MD4 and there we go. In time they escape. Johnny goes down. Johnny was a good boy, but he was not a bulletproof boy. In the meanwhile, Armstrong himself using some rifle rather riskily, though in this case he might just be trying to render it neutral. And there we go, retreating before he suffers the same fate as Heinz und Jürgen. So two amazing twins from Hamburg. We were shot dead. Damn you, evil in a closet. You're wasting good men. At the same time, pushing up the center, full Grenadiers, Pioneers, the MG42. Rifle laying down mines, and of course, infantry reduction, thus initiated for Simon. Mines going down there. Lovely job. The full is advancing. Rifle getting pushed off. Nice pushing up here. A nice assault detachment right there from evil in a closet. Flame for Pioneers, full Grenadiers. Glory to the Third Reich. Raven pushing up here straight into an MG42, hiding behind the shed here. And there we go, getting a few yanks suppressed. Raven moving up on the other flank, doing their best to protect. And clearly, I mean, Evil in the Closet is going for some very aggressive strategy play. I mean, we're seeing, well, what could have been a free full two MG start. He's still got two full and two MGs. Then again, he's got himself another full squad quarter. Again, three full squad, two MGs. Pretty much one of the most aggressive Wehrmacht plays you can imagine. I mean, it's really got a lot of infantry. It's got some MGs to cover the flanks, but also push forwards with. It's really a lot of firepower. It's also one of the more, of course, expensive ones. And, of course, I mean, with already one full squad gone, it's really expensive for you in a closet. So, obviously, he must be planning something. He's obviously planning to go towards here. But Simon is just counter-attacking so aggressively. I mean, really aggressive play from both players. Both pushing forwards, both you know, doing in their own way, but Simon, of course, doing what he needs to do against the Wehrmacht players, of course, flanking. Attack from all sides, cut off, pins and maneuvers, the old five yards. And he's doing it quite nicely, causing severe casualties, cancelling a bunker, which rather indicates Leal is in closet, is definitely intending to set up shop here. And perhaps even cut him off from completely from the right hand side. Armstrong, though, taking some losses, but none there's pushing forwards. MG's constantly shifting about, having troubles. Actually sort of handling the enormous amount of Americans they've got running straight past it. One goes down there's a burst tears through his belly. But nonetheless, the MD crew is forced away, the full is forced away. Forward supply lines Heavy losses is being exchanged by both sides, the third armament, the second SS. Fighting to the death. And certainly some real SS valor there, as opposed to the rather aggressiveness they were known for. And of course, they were certainly known as elite divisions, but of course, what few people also know is that generally SS divisions had more infantry than our regular army divisions. It's one of the things that actually probably allowed them to be that aggressive, but again, it's not something you hear much about. You sort of hear, oh, they got all the best equipment. Usually they didn't. In fact, in particular in the early parts of the war, they got pretty much the worst equipment. It was only later in war that they sort of got, you know, equality with the other divisions, but otherwise, in many parts, I mean, they got about the same as any other divisions, but it was infantry, they really had the difference in. Fultz goes there moving forwards. MP40 is up again, further aggression from Evil in the Closet. And there we go, pushing in against the rifle, using sandbags, by the way, by Simon. Excellent, you know, using his rifle to actually down sandbags. How often do you bloody well see that? Not often. Not often. But again, pushing up Flamethrower Pioneers, leading the way. MG 42 is providing cover for the Sturm Pioneer. Volkskan is moving up, then a nice assault detachment as well. And an MG 42 following up on the assault detachment, really pushing up there. Pioneers striding straight into a mine and pretty much blows up in their face. And it's sheer luck that the Flamethrower tank does not just burst. Continued harassment here on the left flank. Really nice play there by Armstrong. And this viewpoint has still not been taken. So that's pretty much an American flank hanging right outside the Reich headquarters. With the German commander pretty much going, Come on, Dumkopf, take it down! In the meanwhile here, the Volkswagen is doing quite a nice job. And we're seeing a sniper out. Moving up. 
Gets off a nice shot against the false grenades and the false grenades. And oh near! Oh no, Aimstrong! What are you doing, Aimstrong? You moved in too fast. Oh, it might have been the sniper moving ahead. Either way, the MP40 false grenades ended the snipers. That was absolutely. That's the stuff of nightmares for a player like Aimstrong. And it's the stuff of dreams for a player like Evil in a Clutch, you know. For any Vermont player to pretty much have the sniper run into the MP40s. That's the sort of thing where pretty much any Vermont player just goes. Yes! What a seek! Out of the way, finding contingent in the center though, Ames, even the close, is now being forced to spread out his forces, which could definitely give Armstrong further an advantage. At the same time, we're seeing a pants battle phase. He's actually taking up for a panzer command this early on. I mean, we're seeing a panzer rush, which is actually pretty risky. I mean, even with this sort of build up, you'd usually only see them go that far to a Sturm armory. This could either end up biting him in the ass or it could end up working nicely. At the same time, we're seeing Aimstrong taking up, or Simon, which of course means he's probably aware of what's going on. He's only seen Tier 1 from Evil in the Closet, and of course, the usual rule applies. The longer you see something not from the next tier, the m or anything that upgrades sort of with it, the more likely you're going to expect something from the next tier. And again, so on and on. And unless he's not seeing anything from a Klee Barracks or a Storm Armory, you know, he's going to have to f think something bigger. Of course, he might just get something from uh, anything to just counter tier 3, but of course, that could do all right against tier 4. But he's probably still going to be a bit surprised. Panzer Command going up, Assault yes, Force moving up, probably supported by an MG42. Panis moving about, other MG42 supporting a force going to push towards the strategic point. Protecting the fuel right here. Really aggressive play again, really love it. And really nice infantry play from both players. It's so rare that you really get to see such an. Excellent infantry fight. Mines going down for Aimstrong. Great stuff. A lot of American players have a tendency of getting mines, but on the other hand, Aimstrong is just mining well. And again, that's sort of one of the interesting things you have to remember about the Wehrmacht. They're not so strong on the attack. Whatever you can do to slow the mark down is to your benefit. Mines do that nicely. But why can do that nicely? Again, whatever you do to slow them down is great. As whatever you can rob them of momentum off is great. Now we've got the bounce push forward. Aimstrong already going down a mine. Volskan has hit the mine. Heinz is dead. Heinz is dead. Fritz though moves on. Fritz takes command of the squad. For the first land. And there's still the other mine. And oh, Volskan squad down again. And I mean, even the Klaus actually got a mine sweep, but he had it back in the base. What was it back in the base? Sisk Tisk in the closet, Fox they're doing quite nicely. Firing a volley of lead at the American rifle as they move up. Quite a lot of bullets being exchanged right there. Magazines being exchanged. Riflemen being pushed back. Tank depot going up. Corrugated iron being slapped to posts of wood. And bits of tanks being hung up. Ready to push out some great American tanks from Detroit. Or someplace else. And we're seeing Pat. Even a closet going for the Austrian flag panzer probably also the only thing he can advance for at the moment due to if you look at the fuel. So nothing wrong there. Of course, technically he could have tried waiting for a panzer for, but unless he's pushing in for armor. On the other hand, I mean he really is going to wish he did so because I mean Simon Aimstrong has either way pretty much brought up the counter to an Austrian, the tank depot. Whatever he's going to bring up there unless he decides to go for a flame f for a crocodile, is going to pretty much lock down that Ostwind. On the other hand, if Aimstrong really went for a crocodile, that would be absolutely... I'm not entirely sure if you should call it glorious, maddening, or just... Wow. Either way, Evil in the Closet now the want to lay down mines. He's laying up defensive belts. He's preparing for an assault. And also note, he's using the Bart Wire to thus ensure he can actually minimize the amount of places that Aimstrong can attack from, allowing him to thus begin coming the other parts. Ostman moving up. Going to be sent over here to respond to flanking on the right side. Also, no defensive doctrine. And I believe he's already got the bit that allows his points to see farther. Nope, he hasn't actually. Never mind. But fighting going on. MD42 pushing forwards up. A few rifles getting caught here behind his line. And a unit went down the flame for a pioneer's die. A hero's death. The rifle near the veterans. One took them apart with ease. Austin forcing away the rifle and the engineer soon. 37mm gun tearing through them. And the MG42 actually not doing too well here against the rifleman. 
Connector firing away, more bullets at them due to the having more windows on that side. Fonz goes though moving in to clear out the right from front behind the track and the bushes. And we're seeing a Sherman out for Armstrong. Third arm that rolls out his first tank. That's definitely going to be a problem for you in the closet because he does not have anything to stop it. He might have most be able to ma muster a few Panzerfaust, but they're not going to stop the Sherman. Not at least unless you can get off an awful bloody lot of them. Already one Fulsko score is pretty much maimed. Ospin moves up. Evil in the closet playing a bit of a risky game here when he knows there's a Sherman nearby. And looks like even a closet, of course, is waiting to get that big thing. The thing that's going to bring the fear of the Third Reich into any German American tank. Well, the Allied tank in general, the Panther. Osman, though, getting hunted down now by the Sherman. There's nothing to stop it. Mines are down, but the mine built has not been bred, brought up here. So the Sherman pretty much just follows the Osman. And the Osman try does not even try to drag it into the minefield. And damaged engine. Good night, sweet Osman. We hardly knew ye. And there we go, the Austrian blown up. Veterans won for the Sherman. Armstrong is in a roll here. He's definitely turned the table, if not just downright flipped it on evil in a closet. Though he still needs to push forward, he still needs to regain territory. Fulton is here coming under fire. The Sherman pushes forwards. Machine guns fanning away. And even in the closet really, really needs just a bit more fuel to get his Panther. And there we go, Panzer Kampfwagen 5 on the way. From the 2nd SS Panther Battalion. And generally, the way German Panzer Divisions were organized, Panthers were usually in a separate division, Panzer Force, or well, basically anything else that was sort of designated a Panzer was in the other battalion. And the Volksgut Squad went down, another infantry loss. For evil in a closet, he's down to two MGs, a Fulsco score, and some pioneers. Artillery getting called in. Armstrong probably knows what's on the way from the Panzer Command. He wants to stop that first strike, though, misses. Second shot connects with the corrugated iron and the concrete of the Panzer Command. And there we go, chunks are flying off. Pioneer squad went down, trying to repair. No pioneers for evil in a closet and the second SS Panzer Division das Reich. Phew. I'm getting really geared up, aren't I? Sherman just blasting away high explosive shell after high explosive shell impacting on the Panzer Command. Threatening doom and gloom before the Panzer Command even finishes his Panther. But no! Panther is ready at the front! The doom of the Sherman has arrived. The Panzer Command though goes down. Meaning there's only going to be one and Armstrong still has his tank depot, so he could in theory get out tank destroyers to overwhelm it. Sherman getting hunted down. Rifleman moving in. But I'm pretty sure Armstrong doesn't have sticky bombs. He might just be pulling off a feint. He is faking he's faking sticky bombs. His Americans are just running around with the socks waving them, going, ha ha ha, sticky bombs. And the tank wears into the ditch and rather goes, hang on. So svern sticky bombs? Verdammte Amerikanen! Und der dirty socks! Fighting over here, Volskos with MG42 pushes away the rifle. Excellent maneuver there. Panther now holds up the center. Tank destroying away the rather speedy Hellcat. Sherman quickly moves up. Rifle here getting blasted a bit by the Panther. And Radio Cellar gets called in to protect the cutoff point. The vital cutoff point. There's not really much it's connecting at the moment. And there they go. A rain of mortar rounds appears. Hellcat camouflages to get that ambush shot. Actually, quite a nice maneuver. Sadly, the shot bounces off the sloped 80mm armor of the Panther, which basically meant that if it were to be sort of non sloped armor, it would probably be somewhere around 110 to 120 millimeters of actual armor. Sort of the rules of it. Basically, sloped armor means that. There's more armor to sort of be penetrated because it's sort of more diagonally layered. Plus, of course, there's a high chance of basically any round bouncing off. MG42 holding up the flank here, Rifen advancing, but getting hammered with machine gun fire. One squad already caught in the middle of the open. Second one also suppressed. Armstrong quick to repair. That's good. That is good. Panzer Command being replaced. 
taking away resources, of course, from any upgrades or any further units. So in that sense, even despite, you know, not destroying it before, even when Closer was able to sort of, you know, well, before the Panther came out, he still, you know, done some damage, and it's damage that even the closet will have to repair, have to sort out with another Panther command. Otherwise, his Panther is pretty much going to get overwhelmed. Because Fultzkan is not going to keep the flanks safe. MG 42 is pressing the rifle over there. Rifle pushing up the center. MG in the medic bunkers are pressing squads over there. Defensive positions laid up there. And quite nicely holding back the American advance. Nice defensive positions. Medic bunker up. Actually, that might provide him with some more infantry. And we're seeing some Ritzel Kreutz Traeger, some elite SS Panzer Grenadiers, veterans from the Eastern Front. Nah, well, the Eastern Front, possibly even France 1940. So they might have even been here already. For all we know. And Hellcat moves in, tries to get off a few good shots on the bunker. And there we go, shots ready for battle. Rifleman getting suppressed on the western flank. Hellcat blasting away. Not quite suited for that job. Panther moves up. Gets off a nice hit there on the Hellcat, pushing it away. Sherman moves up. Americans making efforts on the right flank. Again, Simon playing aggressively, but also importantly, Simon is not playing stupidly. He's not bashing his head into a wall. He's constantly shifting. He's constantly moving his attack from side to side, attacking elsewhere. Observation post clearly intending that he gets intends to get more Panthers. He needs more fuel for his Panthers. <laughs> Ravnir getting suppressed. Points here being secured. Rather than catching the Pioneers here, perhaps even before after the mine is finished. Rangers have also arrived, by the way. Four aim strong one is already down though. Fultz gets pushed away the rifleman. Will the Fultz be able to execute them? Rangers hit a mine before they arrive. Heavy damage already. Sherman a bit damaged. Supply lines are broken. Looks like a Hellcat went down perhaps for... Oh, MG went down. Sherman cleared it out. Rangers and Rifleman now hold up in the building. That building is definitely a tiny little fortress. And the Hellcat once more moves in to get off a few shots on the MG medic bunker. Armstrong is a bit strapped for fuel, so that could hurt him a bit, and that department sort of gets something to clear it out. Fultzgans and Pioneers moving up in a wondrous movement. Rangers arriving as well. Firing off a few good bazooka shots on the observation post. And pushing up the centre again. Knights cross arriving. Oh, Rifleman, they're not going to survive this engagement. Aimstrong, what are you doing? There we go, retreating. And of course, now an MG42 in the hands of the Americans that could quickly get those Knights cross to dig trenches with their faces. Panther though arrives, which is also going to cause the Americans to get the devil out of there. Replacement pioneers are also out. No veterans here on the way for even the closer and the second SS. Another tank is on the way and another sniper for. Less aim strong. Another raised at artillery barrage, ensuring that basically even the closet can focus his forces a bit more by sort of you know having to expend resources us in some way cover the flank with less forces. That's part of the sort of idea by defensive doctrine. It allows you to sort of expend munitions to sort of really make off a manpower either with a defensive barrage, you know, covering a point, or you know, defense for the fun and basically making your troops tougher, thus allowing you to you know you don't need that many to hold off a force. In theory. Sniper needs to be careful lest he fancies a gut full of MP44 bullets. Panther already has five kills. Tank destroyer, though not ready because he doesn't have the population for it. And moving in against here against the victory strategic point, hoping to connect. Bunker up number two, that's probably going to be an MG bunker to really cover this. MG pulls away, he might be able to render it neutral. There we go, MG bunker is up, suppressing the riflemen, though they might render it neutral, which will help them take it back. Sherman moves up. Riflemen up here in an awful lot of trouble. Knights cross and Panthers, and a second Panther is out. Second Panther. That's definitely spelling trouble for 
Aim strong, and the third armoured. Barbin pushing away the Fox guys on the right hand side. And the Sherman just pushes in to get a hold of the situation. Full armoured force going to be hitting them anytime soon, and I'm not entirely sure the third armoured is ready for this. Oh, well, it looks like they've... Ah, they've managed to reconnect. They have managed to reconnect, meaning they actually hold this and they got population again. The Sook has been unleashed upon the bank. It could go down soon. But there we go. Panthers are rolling up. Sherman getting away. Veterans one health, of course, makes it faster. Hellcats unleashing fire upon the Panthers. Knights Cross suppressed. Quite a bit of action. Quite a bit of action again. Really nice fight. I mean, clearly, Aimstrong is not out of the fight, despite, you know, not having quite full map. So he has to pull back his Sherman. Veterans, you want up for the Panthers? That's definitely going to help. Sticky bombs actually now on the way for the rifleman. Meaning he actually might now actually have another advantage because again, you know, at this stage, even the close might just think now they're just faints any sticky bomb attempts, you know, instead of you know actual sticky bombs. No artillery now being used to cover the strategic point. Mimicking the rates of artillery bars, barrage just a bit more uh, high explosive. Fox goes pushed away from the right hand side. Rifleman Rage is advancing. Hellcats moving forwards. Going to see a push going up from Armstrong towards the centre. Pioneers getting blasted empty from the medic bunker continues to fire away. Continuing to do terrible damage and the rifle not here going to get outflanked and overwhelmed as two knights cross courts move in. <coughs> oh goodness gracious. All oh, this excitement is stressing out my voice a bit it seems. At least my vocal cords. <coughs> not on my throat anyways. Medic bunker almost ready with the grenadier squad. Rifle advancing. Getting suppressed, sniper moving up, getting another MG gunner. Being behind only Helmut to keep the Yankees' heads down. Another one pops out though. Fox is moving up to try and hit the sniper on the flank, forcing a retreat. Rangers moving up, might try and knock out the bunker with a few of the bazookas. Nicely done. Fultz going to do it down. More bazooka shots. The bunker is almost down. Just one more rocket. Just one more rocket or just one more shot from the Hellcat now. And there we go. The bunker is down. Hellcat pushed away. Panthers are advancing. And a slight slip up from Fraps, sadly. Unfortunate. Another banger going up and replacement for Evil in the Closet. Panthers advancing slowly, getting off a few more shots on the Americans as they are arrayed at the edge of their base. And Evil in the Closet, although with all the bunkers, he should perhaps consider changing himself to Evil in a bunker. Grenadier is actually at the front now. Another Hellcat out. And going for the cutoff once more, denying aim strong, precious population. And looks like another race of artillery barrage goes up here on the left flank. Hellcats preparing, Sherman also moving up. And there you go, full assault. The infantry, though, leading the way is already suppressed for the most part, except one squad of rangers. Hellcats moving up. Seems though a bit of a narrow frontage and the Hellcats are not continuing to move, rather meaning they're losing their advantage, which is basically speed. Instead they're not really doing so much, they've managed to knock one Panther down to half health, but that's about it. And one Panther is actually advancing, and Hellcat I mean, advancing forward, rather exposing it to the full attention of the Panthers, also quite undivided. And it goes down. We do see veterans do up for the Sherman. And this Hellcat might also want to consider a slightly more safe position, though both pans are down to half health. Heavy damage that has been inflicted upon the American armor and tank destroyers. And one has in fact been lost. 
Rangers rather than try to push forward. And we're actually seeing that. Oh, dear, an absolutely horrible maneuver right there. Bodyman claws are perhaps a mistake. And veterancy, two of all things. That's just weird. I mean, it does nothing against American armor's guns. It only adds an MG for a Panther, which... I mean, it's not really infantry that is major worry at the moment, I would say. And he's got Knights, Cross, Foxcars and Grenadiers to help with that, partly. I think he should have just invested in more armor initially. Hellcat goes down. He's perhaps trying to keep it there. And, oh, something went down there. Pioneers got crushed by the Panther out of control. Another Pioneer went down. And he's trying to finish off the Panther. He's trying to finish it off, but he's taking too much damage. Foxglens and Gunners are moving up. They could try and Panther Faust. And there we go. A Panther Faust finishes off the job in the name of the Fatherland. Oh. I'm not sure who actually Panther Fausted it. Either way, one Panther is down, but they're quite the cost. Three Hellcats ultimately. Three Hellcats ultimately. Although certainly, I mean, even the cost has also suffered other losses, but the Panther is definitely one of the most expensive ones, and this one left is definitely quite damaged. Hopefully there will be replacement Hellcats soon on the way for Armstrong, a.k.a. Simon. Knights Cross and Fortress leading us assault force towards the right hand side, overwhelming the Americans right there. They do not look ready. And they definitely don't look it as they retreat. Oh, a direct hit on the MG crew does nothing. Sherman, though, needs to be careful. Panthers rolling up. And again, I do feel Veteran D2 might have been a considerable mistake by even a closet. Had he perhaps had a Panzer IV to augment the other two Panthers. He might have pulled it off, but then again, if he just attacked earlier with those two panthers here, he might also have pulled it off. Either way, though, it did not happen, and he's shot one panther now. Oh, I forgot the mid-game analysis. My apologies. My apologies. It's not really been an action-packed game, I'm afraid. <laughs> Rather than squad could go down, suppressed down to two men. And we do see it. Oh, Rifle Squat went down for Aimstrong. So little left. He might be hoping for an off map comment group, I suppose. Could it be? And there we go. Two Hellcats and an armored car. That's pretty much what he could have hoped for. And pretty much the last thing that. Even the closet wanted to happen. It's one Panther is now severely outnumbered. And if Simon can avoid having those Hellcats bogged down, he could knock it out. He could knock it out. Though so far only one has a destroyed engine. But the other two are behind the Panther. Well, the Greyhound and the Hellcat. Hellcat there looks to be gone. Shots bounce off the front. Hellcat tries to get behind. Will it succeed? <laughs> Greyhound right, doesn't really do anything. Main gun destroyed. It's down to one Hellcat. And the Hellcat gets it. The Hellcat gets it. Victory for Armstrong. Both Panthers are down. And perhaps this was an awfully lucky off-map comer group on the other hand. Evil in the closet did nothing to actually prevent, say, two tanks from even being built by Armstrong doing this. Considering he was gone defensive, he could have built a Flak 88. That would pretty much have stopped this. Again, even a Panzer IV to add some fire would have helped. But again, instead he went Veteran G2 when it probably would have done him anything. And didn't. I really have no idea why he went Veteran G2. And that just Veteran G2 could in fact have cost him the fight because he didn't need machine guns on his Panthers. He needed more of something. Either either Flak or a Panzer IV or another Panther. Something. Instead... It was rather set up, and Armstrong was given the right choice, but then again, he could probably have built it from the tank depot either way. Evil in the closet was in a situation that rather allowed him to be overwhelmed, and it happened. And that is ultimately the truth of it. Had again, again, had he prepared a bit, oh, veterans free for the Sherman, but had he had something extra, like a flak or a Panzer IV, he would have won this. Instead... It didn't. Oh, the sniper went down to a mine! The sniper just sort of... Oh, right, I'm... I'm a hero. I'm a... Pfft, gone. 
<coughs> Either way, the 2nd SS Panzer Division is in trouble. Lost a lot of infantry. Lost a lot of valuable panzers. And a third panther is ordered out from the Panzer Command from the SS Panzer Abteilung. Or Battalion. Sherman, they're opening up with his veteran free gun. Knights, Cross, and Grenadiers for the Panzer Schreck. <coughs> no, this stage is probably considered just upgrading with another one. Oh, he's in fact down to two units. He's absolutely gotten pummeled. Rangers in a mind though. We could see another unit down for Armstrong as well. I mean, both have suffered grievously. I mean, both units have certainly taken quite a beating. That's for sure. Knights cross charging into the engineers, trying to repair, but the oh, veterans are free for the Hellcat. <coughs> this is just not looking good for the soldiers of the Third Reich. So I was just trying to suppress a hiccup. Another off map comic group providing with two armor cars and a Hellcat and some riflemen. But this is pretty much game over. Territory. Either way. Evil in a closet had his chance, he squandered it with a Vet two for his panzers. Never mind again that he had rushed for a panzer command and was forced to rebuild it already because of that. So I mean there was a lot of resources which could perhaps even the long run if he could spend it better. Either way, I mean really nice play from him, but ultimately he might just have set himself of that Hellcat though goes down, but there's still a few more. Including our veterans in free one, which is definitely going to be a problem if any of those shots penetrate. There we go. Panther already down to half health. N armored cars keeping the Knights Cross at bay. Hellcats charging forward. 50 calibers roaring at retreating infantry. Where's the Sherman, anyways? And there we go. The Hellcat scores a kill. Another Panther bites the dust. Grenadiers doing what they can against the Greyhound. Veterans in one as 50 caliber rounds got them. We could see a heavy rocket barrage perhaps called in at some sort of roadblock but I don't even think that's going to win him the fight <coughs> there we go heavy rocket barrage called in 280 millimeters some of the heaviest rockets but they actually have bigger rockets than that and main gun destroyed one Greyhound went down that was about it and now his Panzer Command is in trouble Sherman is rolling forwards Another panther on the way. Let's face it and just speed up. What are the odds of getting... Certainly not highest, but still there. Even the closet perhaps feeling a bit sour about the whole affair. But let's just stop it there. I mean, this is pretty much game over. And again, had he had something extra than just that one panther then again, not going for bit 22. He probably would have won this. Again, flag 88, Panzer 4, he'd have won it. Again, for some inexplicable reasons, he went for Vet 22 for his Panthers. I have absolutely no idea why. And again, resource again spent on Panther would also be able to deal with infantry, so... Absolutely inexplicable, but really good fight. Really aggressive infantry play, really great infantry play from both sides. Really great mining from both players. I mean, Armstrong, though, certainly made a... F did not have quite a bit of luck there with... Really fully delaying, even in the closets, you know, infantry push, then Ostrin, then Panthers. I mean, there are probably some other things he could have done better, but... And certainly he was contained, but still he was able to sort of really push back and, you know, really do some damage. So that was definitely quite nicely done there, and although in the end the off map combat groups definitely saw him through, but question is, if you couldn't just have gotten the same already from the tank depots and basically just thought, well, why not? So... Really great match. Hope you enjoyed it. Of course, question is, would you have done the exact same thing as those players? Would you not have rushed for the Panzer Command? What would you have done? Feel free to say so in the comments. But this is Imperial Dane saying cheers. Feel free to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And of course, you know, if you enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe. Tell your friends. If you didn't, well, why not send a replay of your own? Or, you know, Imperial Dane saying cheers.